Good evening, and welcome to Mission Basilica San Buenaventura. This evening we celebrate the fifth Sunday in Lent. Please rise. Justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless from the deceitful and cunning. Rescue me, for you. Thomas, I know you're coming through the monitors up there, and I can hear the monitor here, but he's not coming through the speakers of the church, is he? You're not hearing him through the speakers of the church, so I don't know if we need to change microphones or whatever. You have a beautiful voice. The monitors are working, but the speakers of the church are not uh, working that. Good evening, everyone. And as we celebrate these sacred mysteries with those who are present here in the church, those who are joining us by live stream. We do so in confidence that just as Jesus was lifted up, that we too through baptism share in his death and resurrection and we are lifted up. And so we offer our praise in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we seek to be lifted up through the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Keep 
By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, we may walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I believe we're remedying it now. He would, you could hear that through the speakers, yes? A reading from the book of prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will, it will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers. The day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and their relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. And for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. of your compassion wipe out my offense thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me a clean heart create for me O God and a steadfast spirit renew within me Cast me not out from your presence, 
and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Whoever serves me must follow me, says the Lord. And where I am, there also will my servant be. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from our Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was born in Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me 
must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, the voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. And he said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world, and now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. As we meditated on this gospel message on Thursday evening for those who joined us with the Lectio Divina, I asked myself again, what does it mean to lift up Jesus? John notes that Jesus is referring to his death on the cross. We've gotten used to, to a certain extent, used to the notion of crucifixion in the context of the way of the cross, but you know, in Jesus' day, it represented a terrible shame. To be crucified was a terrible shame. The Romans used this punishment for the worst of the criminals. And like the thieves, Jesus describes in, the, describes in the parable of the Good Samaritan, they attacked a man, they, they, they robbed him, they stripped him of his clothes, I'm talking about the Good Samaritan, and they threw him in a ditch to die, and if the Romans had been there, they would have crucified him and gave him a shameful death. If they had caught those thieves, they would flog them, affix them to a wooden beam, and leave them to die an agonizing death. And ordinary people would walk by and jeer at them, saying, you are getting what you deserve. We hear that all too often when someone is hurt in some way. And Jesus, by accepting the cross, took the shame on himself. Most people would have assumed that he must have done something terribly bad, Jesus. In addition to shame, the cross inflicted a physical pain that you and I hope we never endure. It is beyond imagining as the body hangs there. We see it represented in this crucifix here in the church. The letter to the Hebrews says that Jesus offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. For Jesus, the cross meant shame. It meant suffering. But what does it mean for us? We're not going to be crucified. Can we relate to it? Can we acknowledge it? For sure we can and should 
take our own suffering and shame to the cross. When we are ill, no matter what the onslaught of the illness is, give it to Jesus as he accepted it on the cross. When we are perplexed with mental illness or challenges, give it to Jesus as he accepted it on the cross. Jeremiah alludes to that. He tells the people they have been brought low because they broke the covenant. Remember that God, at the very beginning of Lent, I talked about this, God made a covenant with Noah that applies to the entire human race. It's a universal covenant. And then with Moses, a, a covenant invoking the Ten Commandments. Unfortunately, we broke those commandments. Jeremiah then prophesies that, that God will make a new covenant by writing his law on the hearts of his followers, a law of mercy, a law of justice, a law of love. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. You know, I was a high school educator for 30 years and, and frequently I would ask a, a teenager when they would come to confession and confess their sins with great humility and honesty and openness. And I would say, which of these sins do you think God remembers the most? And they would stop for a second, they would start to speak, and I'd go, God remembers none of them. That's divine mercy. You and I, we have human mercy. We might say, well, I'll forgive, but I'm not going to forget, or something like that. Or we just remember things that happened in the past, someone got wronged, that's human mercy, if, it's, if you even want to call it mercy, but divine mercy, divas, and God is rich in mercy, it is over, it is gone, it is as if it never happened. And that is what Jesus gives us on the cross. God forgives and reconciles us through the self sacrificial death of Jesus. We are nearing the end of this Choresma, this, this Lenten season. We're nearing the end. Next week is Palm Sunday, the Lord's Passion, and then Holy Week. Hence, the cross brings us to recognize two things. The forgiveness of sins. Jesus takes our shame upon himself. And that suffering is not futile. It has meaning. When you and I suffer, if we turn it over to Jesus, it has meaning. When we take our sufferings to Jesus, we align ourselves with Jesus who offered his life for the expiation of our, our sins. We live in a world where, thanks be to God, not much suffering has uh, much suffering has been alleviated. Oh, I know the pandemic, I know we have our, our ills and our, our problems, but go back a century or two centuries or three centuries ago, and my gosh, then people truly knew suffering. Just to compare our pandemic to the, to the plagues is, in the past is no way, huh? Uh, you don't have to go back as far as the bubonic plagues. More recent pandemics, even 1918, 1957, 1968, brought horrible deaths to young people and children alike. And they had no vaccine. We have a vaccine now in warp speed. But bad as our pandemic has been, we could and should count our blessings. At the same time, we offer uh, uh, other, other afflictions have accelerated. Uh, the mental suffering, people being cooped up in their homes and, and parents of, of noble stature now becoming teachers to teach their children. Depression, when is this going to end? So many deaths, even suicidal uh, 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 isolation of the uh, plagues many people. 
especially our youth, what's the purpose of living, some people say. But when you and I, when we lift up the cross, we say, your suffering is not meaningless. Your suffering is not meaningless. On the Friday evenings during Lent, uh, we have walked with Jesus to Calvary, where he is lifted up on the cross. And every time we enter this historic mission, we see this significant, sizable statue of the crucifixion, Jesus lifted on the cross. May we be reminded always of the supreme sacrifice Jesus made for us when we suffer insults or infirmity. May we walk with Jesus and align ourselves with him whose sufferings brought us the remission of our sins and eternal life. These next two weeks will be paramount in our emotional, spiritual, even intellectual and heartfelt understanding of Jesus being lifted up on the cross. Next Sunday, we will read the Passion of the Lord at Mass. Let us prepare the way of the Lord. Let us lift up the cross of ourselves and give it to Jesus, that he may give us divine mercy, total forgiveness, and life eternal. Amen. Lift high the cross, the cross of love outpoured. And I forget the rest of it. Do you know, Mr. Thomas? I do this every once in a while, but we lift high the cross. So now let us stand and profess that common faith in which the cross of Christ is lifted high. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. In him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers, with trust and confidence that God will hear us, 
Let us bring our prayers before our Lord. That all the people of God may know the Lord through the law of love written in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may come together to craft a vision of world peace and respect for all human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who suffer from serious disease may find healing and that all who care for them may be strengthened and renewed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the elect of our parish, as they continue their journey to the Easter sacraments, Shamara, Shamara, Galilea, Galilea, Olga, Olga, Fabian, Fabian, Monica, Monica, Andre, Andre, Diego, Diego, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, Giovanni, Giovanni, Margaret, Margaret, and Shay, Shay. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish community, through our Lenten sacrifices and prayers, may grow in charity and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our parish community who are ill or homebound, especially Steve Esperance, Steve, Rafael Ortega, Rafael, Bonifacio Juarez, Bonifacio, Felicia Cole, Felicia, Juanita Basilio, Juanita, Brenda Schmidt, Brenda, Suzanne Farmer, Suzanne, Maria Hermosillo, Maria. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sisters and brothers who have died in faith, especially Carmelita Astedan, Carmelita, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all these special intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of redemption, you guide us to your justice, love, and truth. Hear our prayers that we may be faithful servants and bear much fruit for your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. up thy cross, the Savior said, if thou wouldst my disciple be, take up thy cross with Let not its weight fill thy weak spirit with alarm. His strength shall bear thy spirit up and brace thy heart and nerve thine arm. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred Time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered afflictions, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection 
satisfaction you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, Robert, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, our Blessed Patrons, Buenaventura, Yudnepero Sera, Kateri Tekawitha, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I, I, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. On you stay, quit all his peccat amundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, quit all his peccat amundi, miserere nobis. On you stay. Behold the on you stay, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen, amen, I 
Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The announcement for our Mission Basilica community and for those joining us via live, live stream. If you know of a parishioner who is or has been infected with COVID and would like to receive prayers from the parish community, please call and inform the parish office. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament is live stream and in person Sundays at 7 p.m. 12.15 p.m. Mass resumes on Easter Sunday. See the bulletin or visit our website for more information on Holy Week schedule, updates of COVID-19 and more events. And also our Adoration Chapel will be open on Monday as well from Monday through Thursdays uh, from 6 a.m. Monday through 6 a.m. Thursday. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy. Grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Christ proclaims.
Christians follow where the Master trod. Our King victorious, Christ the Son of God. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Led on their way by this triumphant sign, the combine. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred Oh. 